Hello everybody and welcome back to yet another uh, computer related video here on the channel and it wasn't even like a week ago that I found uh, that, or maybe it was a little bit over uh, a week ago that I found um, that $3 Dell laptop um, at one of uh, my local uh, thrift stores and recently, actually uh, today, I was out, uh, you know, garage sailing and well, I came across this um, piece of hardware right here and I could not pass this up especially for a price of five dollars that's you know what I paid for this which is a extremely good price um, for something like this and um, yeah well what is this you might be wondering well this is a, a Zenith data systems uh, portable laptop computer from around 1987 um, I, I believe at least the uh, late, you know, mid to late 1980s, um, more so the late 1980s than anything else. Um, I believe this uh, particular model is from around 1986 or 87. Um, but yeah, this is um, a portable laptop computer. And, you know, as you can see, the only real problem with it is that it is uh, heavily uh, yellowed, which is a common problem with you know older um, you know electronics like this. As you can kind of see here, you know this is how it's uh, you know supposed to look, and this is how it looks now. Um, there's some parts on this that are not uh, fully uh, yellowed, as you can see here. You know there's like the actual color that it is supposed to be. Um, so this is going to start a new uh, little mini series here on the channel. This is something that, that I usually do uh, from time to time, um, where we're going to be tearing this uh, whole machine down and we're going to be uh, restoring it, hopefully uh, back to uh, you know fully working condition and making it look hopefully ten times better than it does now. Um, this video is just going to be a you know brief overview of you know what I got and you know to kind of show you what state that this uh, laptop is in now and um, after this I am going to start um, you know kind of tearing this down um, I am going to be uh, retro brighting it which is a uh, you know process that I've done on uh, a you know few other things on this channel and we're going to be seeing if we can get this thing you know back to uh, fully working order, which it, as I said, it you know kind of works now, um, but the only real issue with it is that uh, which I will show you uh, you know once it turns on, it's not reading uh, any um, floppy diskettes that I put into it, and I don't think the hard drive works. So those are two things that are going to you know need to be either fixed or just you know, like you know swapped out. Here is uh, your uh, standard three and a half inch floppy diskette right here. Um, now this is definitely not one of the largest, you know, portable like you know machines from this time period. Because if you look at, for example, uh, the Compact Portable One, um, you know, laptops like that, those laptops were insanely, you know, they were basically the size of like a large briefcase. They were really, really large. This does not even, uh, you know, compare to that. This thing weighs about 14 pounds. It's a you know very compact design, something that you can like you know fold up and stand you know and just like you know put it out of the way if you wanted to, something like that. But this was uh, one of the first, I believe, to take on uh, this uh, sort of clamshell design. I'm not 100% sure of that. I believe there were uh, many other PCs that did that, um, but this was um, probably one of the first um, to. You know do this and as I said what we're gonna be doing in this video is taking a look at this thing uh, you know basically powering it on and seeing you know what uh, sort of condition that it, uh, you know it is in or just you know basically me showing you um, how this thing is as it stands right now I, uh, I have uh, you know turned this thing on before um, and I as I said I was mentioning uh, that the floppy drive you know doesn't really function as intended um, but I'm going to be showing all, all of you that here on video. But before that we do that, um, I'm going to you know go around uh, the actual machine and give you a uh, you know brief tour of you know what um, I/O that this machine has. So, um, so on the uh, left side you have ports uh, for modem, which I'm assuming at this time would be a uh, you know fax modem, something like that. Um, back here 
um, this piece right here actually comes off. This is uh, the um, external battery piece, and you can actually, if you don't want to use it uh, with like you know battery power, you can just pull this thing off like this, and it just comes right off. And this adds a lot of weight uh, to you know like the actual machine itself. This is probably about you know two or three, maybe not two or three, but you know this is at least one pound right here. So that adds you know a lot of weight to it. Um, but uh, yeah, so this you know if you didn't want to uh, you know carry it around with like you know battery power, if you wanted to use it like you know at, like at your house or something, you can use it like this. And this definitely makes it uh, a lot slimmer uh, of a design because you know this gives it uh, a, a like you know it like takes off you know this whole part which is basically like the same size as you know up to here like you know the whole like you know this whole back portion uh, of the actual machine right here um so on the back here you, you do have uh let me just get it up here properly on camera you have uh your dc in uh power port you have ports for a um, external crt you have um, an RS-232C uh, port, uh, a printer port, and um, right here you have um, an external uh, floppy disk drive port. Um, so this is basically if you wanted to attach um, a, you know, separate, uh, you know, floppy disk drive and have two uh, at one time, you know, you could have this as, you know, as a, uh, you know, um, option for you. Um, so those are all the ports on the back. On the uh, right side here, you have uh, your power switch right here, your uh, internal uh, floppy drive, and then over here on the front, when we open up the computer, you have your, you know, obviously keyboard right here, um, your uh, drive and power indicator lights, and your contrast and brightness uh, adjustment dials, or not really dials, but I guess like, you know, sliders, you can just, you know, move them like this right here. Now you will notice that uh, on this side here uh, it says drive active uh, left and right and there is only, let me just get a focus there, there is only uh, one internal uh, you know floppy drive so I'm guessing that the left means uh, for the hard drive because you, see, you can see somebody wrote very faintly under that someone wrote C. If you can see that I'm not really, see that C and A. A uh, is so, so you know if you're not aware um, the way DOS works with drives is it, it, like, you know, the first drive letter A is always saved uh, for a floppy drive. B is also used for a secondary floppy drive. And then C is for your first hard drive. So that that's kind of how, and, you know, that's obviously still the way that, you know, Windows works today as, you know, C is the default letter for uh, your Windows hard drive. So that's, you know, something that's uh, very interestingly been, like, you know, carried over from the DOS days. Um but you know, you, you know, so you can see here. So this uh, answers like the, you know, question that I was going to ask. This is for uh, the internal hard drive that's in here, which I don't believe works because when uh, I like you know turn it on, it says that there is a disk error. Um, so we're going to uh, be trying all that out right here. Um, so I have the um, original uh, Zenith power adapter that came with it right here. I'll show you kind of right there in Zenith Data Systems. Um, the guy was very nice enough to include this with uh, the actual machine itself. And the way that this, uh, like, you know, whole charging system or something, like zoom out of this, so you can actually see, um, is that if you wanted to, uh, you know, charge the actual battery, I don't think you can do it separately. I think you have to have this piece plugged into the back. But when I, you know, do that, it tells me that there is uh, a low battery, which probably, you know, shows that this thing probably, ha you know, hasn't been charged in, you know, like the longest time, and it might not even, you know, hold a charge anymore. Um, but we're going to, you know, basically bypass that and just plug it in, uh, you know, directly to the back port of the laptop here and turn it on that way. And that just kind of, you know, saves us having to go through uh, the actual battery module. Um, Getting this thing open, if you haven't seen me do it, there's these two uh, tabs on the side you have to pull, and then the uh, you know whole screen pops up. And something else that is very nice is you can actually you know bring this whole thing back if you wanted to like that. Um, so and this obviously makes it easy for uh, you know uh, repairs on this if you had to like like you know change this out or something. You can see that you get access uh, to these two screws right here. So that might be what that is for, but it's probably also for if you wanted to use your laptop like this for whatever reason, you can do that. Um, 
So we're just going to reach here and turn this on over here if I can reach the power switch. And you'll see that the left drive light immediately turns on. And you'll see that it, it does take a while to actually like you know boot up here but I can change the uh, brightness and contrast I'm trying to do it for the camera so you, I mean let me actually turn the light out so you can see this the best uh, <clears throat> can actually see it you know but yeah here it is here it is where you can faintly see it. I need to move the dial down I don't know what is best for this camera I, I think that shows up somewhat well let me contrast Discard oh, brightness. Yeah, okay, you can faintly see that it says disk error drive not ready. So yeah, it, it basically says this every single time, um, and then the screen. I think that that's like a power saving feature, which is nice if you don't use like or if you don't like you know interact uh, with the machine for a certain period of time, the uh, you know screen will dim itself, which is nice. I can kind of hear it though, like uh, you know you can somewhat hear it turning on. Um, or like you know spinning at least I think that's the hard drive um, but then the other thing that that happens is when I put in uh, you know a blank uh, floppy diskette which is something that I usually try to do to see if because I don't ever want to risk a you know a good floppy diskette on a drive that has the you know potential to be bad um, but you know when I put this in you'll see that nothing happens on the uh, on the light here, it doesn't do anything. I can, I'll just try to put in a a uh, MS DOS boot disk because I do have like a billion of those. I just don't really like putting them into, you know, a drive that you know might be bad because I've had disks eaten before, and it's really annoying. Let's just try to, yeah. See, it still doesn't do anything. You gotta press. Well, cause see, the problem is we can't get into. You see this here? You can't get into, like... Actually, you know what? You, let me try to press delete to enter the BIOS on this. Okay, so we are back, and I was actually able to boot this into a uh, Zenith, uh, like, memory test mode kind of thing. And I believe from here, we can actually boot into the floppy disk to see if it was actually working. I, I was trying, I think I held down uh, the escape key while it was booting up and it, and it like, you know, let me boot into here. So what we're going to do is press B colon and then it tells us to boot either zero, I'm going to do one because most likely the, actually no zero, because most likely the floppy disk is going to be zero. Never mind. Okay, well, let's do B. Ah, there we go. Now it's reading it. I can see if you look at the uh, right light there, it, it was just on, and I just uh, heard the, uh, you know, like f uh, floppy drive kind of spin up, or it was doing something at least. So we'll we'll see what happens if it boots in MS DOS or not. So the the uh, light is off now, but oh, it's doing that disk error drive not ready thing again. <laughs> So, I don't know if this floppy drive is bad or not, because I might need to change it out, I'm not really sure. I think one of the um, problems is this may not be uh, a high-density disk drive, and this is a high-density disk, so that might not be... Um, well, obviously, it's it's not able to, you know, run um, this, or to, like, you know, read this, or at least all of it, so that's probably the reason why. Um, it wasn't able to get anything from the right drive, but from the left drive, you know, you see that the light is on at all times, so it is reading some from the hard drive, but something's just wrong with it. Um, I, I might just try to format the hard drive right here, and, well, if we can even do that, because I, I, I was trying to boot into, you know, DOS, um, but if there is, because I don't think I have low-density, you know, diskettes that would work on the, you know this computer so yeah that is basically where we stand with uh, this Zenith laptop right here um, I have basically tried uh, to you know boots uh, from the floppy drive and I believe the issue is that the drive may work but it's just because this is a, a high density floppy that it's not able to actually boot it or like well you know boot from it um, I'm definitely going to be making a few more videos on taking this thing apart and you know, retro brighting it. That's going to be a 
like you know whole video you know kind of separate from this um let me bring the camera down but i just did want to make this video sort of a you know brief overview just to kind of show you guys that i did get this and just you know kind of let you know uh what to uh, expect on the channel um, in the next week or so. So um, I, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely be sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this and you know definitely for the one that will be coming uh, sometime next week. And um, as always guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.